They are parasites that are lower and worthy of less respect than the worms that live inside dogs' bum holes. One, two, three, four, five. Hello and welcome to episode one of Rob Reviews Everything. I'm Rob and I'm going to be reviewing loads of shit. If you're already a fan of Rob Mulholland has an opinion, it's that. But with star ratings, don't worry, it's still the same shit. So that's right, I will review anything. From funny internet videos to fisting. If it's a thing, I'll bloody review it. If you want to give me a suggestion of something to review, pop it in the comments below. People who don't leave comments and suggest things, zero stars. People who like, subscribe and comment, five stars. Coming up on today's show, we have got mumble rap and sexy men in lovely skirts. But first, reviewers. Reviewers are some of the lowest forms of life on the entire planet. Every single reviewer is an insane egomaniac who thinks that their opinions are important despite them being absolute fucking pond scum. There is not a reviewer on earth who isn't a smelly fucking virgin. They are parasites that are lower and worthy of less respect than the worms that live inside dogs' bum holes. At least parasitic dog bum worms are doing something by, like, excavating some of the shit out and maybe helping the dog lose weight. At least there's some sort of purpose to their existence that is higher than being a fucking reviewer. The profession has lost its prestige, I'll be honest, in recent years with the fact that like anyone can be a reviewer now. All you need to be is some dickhead with a camera and a YouTube channel and you can just spout whatever uninformed bollocks you like. Everyone who works as a reviewer has already failed at the thing they end up reviewing. That's how you become a fucking reviewer. If you review music, your band definitely didn't work out. If you review theatre, no one put you in their play. If you review stand-up, you are a paedophile. Like the problem with reviewers in 2021 is they are entirely redundant. The idea of reviewing came from an age when art was worth money. Because as we all know, nowadays, art is free. And uh, whoever makes it has just got to give it away on the internet in the hopes that people will generously just decide based on absolutely nothing and no real need to, to support them out of the goodness of their heart. Patreon.com forward slash Rob Mulholland from as little as one pound a month. <laughs> when art was worth something, you had to pay for it, which meant it was good to know if it was shit before you bought it. So, you know, you'd read a little review and you'd read some cunt going, this is a masterpiece. And you'd think, you know what? I'll spend my tenner on that. In the past, you just like bought an album or a film or like a comedy video or a book or whatever without any real knowledge of it beyond something you'd read in the paper about it. Like you couldn't just like try it out. You just had to gamble. And if it was shit, Fuck you, you've lost your money. So, you know, having someone's opinion on it was quite useful. But nowadays, now, it's not useful at all. It takes more time to read a review than it does to just check out a bit of the thing you were thinking about buying. Like, one of my friends told me that Alt-J were an amazing band, and within seconds, I'd got out of my phone, played a little bit, and proved him dead fucking wrong. The system works perfectly well without reviewers in it at all. I do want to be fair, though. I always want to be fair. I will always be fair. Not all reviewers are equal. Some of them are better than others. Like, for example, the worst reviewer of all is Brian Logan from The Guardian, who you might remember from Channel 4's Breastfeeding My Boyfriend. And the best, by an absolute mile, no one's competing, is me. So, I'll dish out the star ratings fairly based on that. I get five stars. Well done, me. And all other reviewers get zero stars. Fuck off you. Except for Brian Logan, who gets minus one. Next up is a review I had a request for from Matt Ashby. It is Mumble Rap. Now, Mumble Rap, if you don't know what it is, it's rap music where everyone who does it is on so many drugs that they can no longer fully form words. If you want to know which sort of rappers it is, it's all the ones that have Lil. They're all called things like Lil Baby or Lil Xan or Lil Penis or Lil Chance of Surviving Till I'm 40. And they all look like they've fallen asleep at a frat party. Like, you know, facial 
facial tattoos, gold teeth, and cold dead eyes. I remember when rappers used to look cool. They didn't have these fucking stupid gimmicks, did they? You know, back in the day when rappers were cool and had like sweet stuff like shower caps or really big clocks. But mumble rap is, I have to say, fucking shit. Rap is an art form that is all about your words and what you say, right? Say something, you little fucks! Like, all mumble rap is like, I, I took a Xanax and another Xanax. I did some Molly and I took another Xanax. Sweet bars, bro. If you're not singing, you really have to put a lot into rap to make it fucking good. And good rappers do. They make stuff complex and interesting. Not these guys. They've found a cheat code around it. They just waffle on a little bit about drugs over like a repetitive beat. And then what they do is add ad libs. They're called ad libs despite being totally rehearsed. They're the little things where they're like, <laughs> every single fucking song nowadays. <laughs> Cheese! Ho, ho! Over and over again. Oh, it does my fucking head in. Tell me about the big booty bitches you're banging. Tell me about a fucking drug bust that went wrong. You know, tell me that you're the greatest on earth. Just this bollocks mumbling is awful. All their songs are about the same fucking things. And it's not even like, you know, about like hell and guns and women like ACDC or something cool. Just every single song is about taking fucking tranquilizers, which you, comes through in the level of effort that they have put into their fucking music. They need to not all be taking Xanax. Jesus Christ. I, I'd rather they took fucking anthrax, the little cunts. Like rappers in my day used to die in cool ways. It would be like in a gang beef or like, you know, a drug deal gone wrong. Now they're all dying because they got addicted to their grandma's pain medicine. Like, yeah, I got a real bad problem with cough medicine, man. Grow the fuck up. What are you addicted to now, Calpol? Fucking chewable Flintstones vitamins? Piss off. Come talk to me when you're shooting smack directly into your bollocks like a proper rock star. Like, Takeshi69 is the ultimate example of a shite mumble rapper. The thing with Takeshi as well is, he's a fucking snitch. He went to court and ratted on a load of people. I thought snitches were meant to get some fucking stitches. Where's his stitches? I see no stitches. He should be looking like the tapestry in your nan's house at this point, the little rat. Obviously, I'm not advocating violence because that would get me kicked off YouTube but I guess I am mourning its absence if you will in this case I am well aware this is the most old man yells at clouds video I have ever fucking made and with that in mind I do think it's good that music that young people are making is pissing off me, a white guy in my 30s. And on the plus side to this mumble rap bullshit is a lot of the rappers are having the common good decency to die young so mumble rap Three stars! And finally on today's episode, we have Dominic Calvert-Lewin's sexy, sexy legs in a sexy skirt. So, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the Everton striker, was recently pictured on the front cover of a magazine in a skirt, and Yadar lost his fucking head. Footballers in my day were proper tough. He gets his ass bloody kicked. First and foremost, when it comes to stuff like this, Everyone should just dress how they fucking want. If you want to dress in a way that makes you happy, go bloody do it. Who decided it's two leg pipes of material for men and one pipe of material round all of them for women? It is just something we've all collectively agreed upon that we definitely can just not. Although in this case it is very clearly a grave case of cultural appropriation from the Scottish. People should be free to wear whatever makes them happy, whether it's a burka or a fucking thong or anything in between. If you have a problem with how someone else is dressed, here's a little tip for you, right? Here's what you can do in that situation. Problem solved! In this case, it is bloody brave of Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He is a Premier League footballer, and I can only imagine the level of grief he's going to get walking back into Everton's changing rooms. Although, to be fair, it's not the most controversial thing an Everton player has done in recent times, so, you know, probably let this one go, lads. You've got to admire the bollocks on the lad, and if you crane your neck a little bit, you can. My only issue with this is, cool with you wearing a skirt, mate, wear whatever you want, why did it have to be so horny? Like, did he need to be dressed as a little, like, Catholic schoolgirl? I didn't want to have to be questioning my sexuality this morning because I've had a little look at his beautiful fucking legs. Ugh. It's not a look I'm going to be rushing out to rock at any point, but fair fucks to the lad, you know? Why not? We're all going to die one day. If you want to wear a little skirt, wear a little fucking skirt, mate. On your crack, lad. Dominic Calvert-Lewin in a skirt. 
think it's very cool and brave and all that, but a little bit too sexy. So, Dominic Calvert-Lewin in a skirt, four stars! That's it for this episode. Let me know what you'd like me to review in the comments. And thank you very much to all of my Patreons for keeping me going. You are amazing. And you can join them at patreon.com forward slash Rob Mulholland for one pound a month. I'll be back with another one of these next week. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.